Flats Class YouTube, Captain CA here. I'm in the studio today doing a little, well, remodeling, if you will. But uh, I wanna teach you um, something that I feel will eliminate a lot of the line twist and just some of the problematic issues that come with fishing spinning reels. So the number one thing is, how do you spool up a spinning reel the proper way? Because that is where all the trouble begins and you can eliminate it if you know a few simple rules. So today, that's my job. I'm gonna teach you how to do it. So let's go out to the barn. I'm gonna leave this mess behind me and we're going to show you the proper way to put you on the path to success. Okay, when I'm spooling spinning reel, spinning tackle up, and I just put on this new rod, the sustain. This is a C3000, which means the spool depth is the same as the 2500. So spool size, everything, this is really like a 2500 uh, body on this reel. It is super light, but it's super strong. In fact, uh, not to get into a Shimano commercial, I would say likely my most favorite of all the Shimano spinning reels would definitely be the Shimano Sustain. Uh, 3000 is the perfect size. So before we get started, I'm going to take maybe three seconds and I'm going to tie on some mono backing. This is 10 pound backing. I almost never put on anything heavier than 10 pound mono backing on it. Once you start getting into 15 and 20 pounds, the way it lays on the spool makes the braid itself when I apply it on top of the backing get kind of like wrinkly, almost wobbly and doesn't lay nice. So smaller, lighter weight monos like 10 pound are perfect. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a second, do that off camera and then I'll be right back and I'll show you how we're gonna how we're gonna spool this rod up and all the rules you'll need to pay attention to. All right. I have gone to the trouble of spooling the sustain about 15 or 20 percent full with backing. Uh, the other reason I like 10 pound backing, eight or 10 pound backing, uh, I never intend to get that deep into the spool because once you're at that point, it's probably going to be a zing pow moment, just letting you know. But see how limp it is? It's nice and limp and it doesn't want to spring off the spool. You start using 15 pound, 16 pound, 20 pound monofilament as backing, you get big problems. So it's a big help there. Now the next thing I'm going to do is tighten the drag. I'm going to tighten the drag down really well. I don't want to have that slippage. So. The only thing left to do is decide which way I'm going to run this label. Now you hear a lot of pros say, well, you know, it's always label up. Well, I'm here to tell you, on the thousands of, of spinning reels I've spooled up, sometimes that is not true, absolutely not true. What you gotta consider is when you turn this, this spool, okay, it's turning this way, okay? So you've got to make sure that the line comes off this spool in the same direction. So it's got to turn this way. So if this one's turning this way, this one has to turn that way to keep the twist out. Now there will be some that will tell you it really doesn't matter. You can't put that much twist in it. But when you have it under pressure, which we're gonna put this on with a wet rag, I think it makes a huge difference because like I said earlier, it's your fault if you get wind knots. There's a lot of ways to mitigate wind knots, but the number one way is to put the line on properly. So I'm gonna tell you that if this is spinning this way, this better spin this way. Now I'm just not gonna lay this down, you know, in this case, it is the right way, label up. I'm not just gonna lay it down on the deck and spin it up. 
I'm not going to do that. Uh, as limp as this is, and I'm using 10 pound, a lot of my, my spinners are, are spooled up, most of them, with 8 pound. But I'm on my way to Louisiana next week. I'm doing this before the ICAST show. And I've got this cool moonshine color. And when I go out to Louisiana, hey, let's face it, I like to shoot cool videos. And when we're fishing for those big red fish in the ponds, those big black drum, it is nice to be able to see that really bright line against that dark water when you're fighting those fish. So I'm going to put 10 pound on it and give myself a little bit uh, more oof. It would seem that the nesting bird in the barn here is, is all a part of this video as well. So now I'm going to connect this braid and this backing with really a simple, I'll use a uni knot. Lots of times I just tie a blood knot, but I'm, for demonstrations, uh, the purpose of demonstration here, I'm just going to do it with the good old uni knot. So let me tie that up real fast, and then I'm going to show you a trick that I do on the boat all the time so that I can keep this perfectly under tension okay and we're going to do that at the back of the boat so i'm going to move the camera okay now the label is up i've got my connection knot and i'll try to get that in there where you can see it okay small three turn uni knot that's it now since i've determined that the line's got to come off this way because the spool when it the spool on the spinning reel, when it faces it, it turns that way. So they both got to turn the same direction, naturally, to keep the line from being twisted. So that means, do I just lay it on the deck and, and put it on with tension? You could, um, but you got to be careful. And then you've got the problem with this thing wanting to bounce and jump and land in the deck of the boat or go overboard or whatever. So uh, again, I'm out here, but you've seen these big twist ties on my boat in the past. If you ever watched this show, you're probably wondering what they are. I use them for everything. As rod holders, sometimes when I'm on the polling platform, I utilize them to hold my back rest up. I'll, I'll tie it off with a twist tie so it doesn't fall down so I can get into compartments um, because we're in seas or in wind. But, uh, but another little handy deal that I have found for these is I take the twist tie and I go through the spool like so and they make perfect little you know holders for your fishing line for your spools so I'm gonna just tie this up just like so and I'm gonna give you a closer look here and that will bring the line from underneath in fact I'll adjust it for you that will bring the line so that it comes underneath by coming underneath, it's going counterclockwise. So it will go opposite of what the reel, or in the same sink as the reel when I start reeling it up. So now I'm going to spool the whole spool and I'm gonna keep it under tension on the rod and I'm gonna spool this up. So I'm gonna change the shot again so it's a little wider shot so that you all can see it. And then just watch how easy this comes off with a damp rag and putting it on the spool and I'll show you exactly how full you need to put for your brand new spinning reel. Stay tuned. All right, I apologize for the close proximity of backrest here, but it was the only way for your, uh, other than an OTS over the shoulder shot um, for you to see me spool this up. So what I like to do is I've got my wet rag here and I'm going to grab a hold of this line with that wet rag. Hold it on here. I've only come through the first guide on this rod. And I'm going to put... See how easy that is? Good tension. Remember, I tighten the drag on this as well. So I'm using a wet rag, squeezing the line, putting it under tension on here. And I'm, I'm basically taking it off the natural way it goes onto the reel and off the main spool. And don't overfill these spools, especially when you're throwing 6, 8, or even 10 pound braid. I rarely go over 10 pound braid. Uh, when I do, it's because we're fishing docks or something like that, and I've got size 
maybe 5,000, 6,000 reels. Most of my 4,000s and under are 10 and 8. They really are. And there's a magic spot that I like to fill these things. You know, with fluorocarbon, and I do use fluorocarbon every once in a while on my spinning gear, uh, especially if we're fishing for bonefish or something like that. But with, but with braid, I don't feel like I got to get too much line on there. I'm going to check it right now. Got a little bit of that powder on there, and it's just about perfect. I'd say that's just about perfect. And the way I can tell when I'm reeling it up is I'm looking at the bottom part of my spool. So I'm going to cut this here, and then that's why I keep these little pieces of blue tape so I can tape my spools. Cut it off here. I know I put it on there, no line twist. Look how nice it lays on that spool. I mean, it really lays nice. And then when you look at the back edge of this spool, you can see I didn't fill it completely full, but probably less than an eighth of an inch. Um, I have it spooled with this 10. You're probably thinking, well, you put backing on it. That was a shallow spool. How much line did you really get on it? I can tell you by using the smaller spools, uh, not these bigger spools. These big spools have like 3,000 yards of line on them. Um, but when I have 150 yard spools, if I fill them about 15% on my 2500s and some of my 3000s, uh, 15 to 20, 25%, I can usually run the spool out and it'll be dead perfect on it almost every time. Uh, especially if I'm using the 10 pound soft mono. So now I've got a, a deal where it's not going to slip. Uh, looks pretty good here. I think I'm, I'm, I'm pretty solid. I'm ready for my leader material. But that's really all there is to this, uh, to spooling it up. You got to think, the lighter braids don't have the memory, because once you're above 10 pound, you start getting into that 14, 15, 16 pound braid weights. There's a certain amount of memory with them. There's no memory with the 10. The 10's nice. Eight's even better, softer. So on the braid weights, I like to go with the lighter braid weights because typically when I'm throwing this stuff, I'm just throwing lighter lures. I'm, I'm using more finesse techniques with my spinning gear, um, especially flats fishing um, fall, winter, and early spring. But by, by being able to spool these up with these lighter weight braids, tension all the way down on, on, the, uh, on the drag, don't forget to back that off. You don't want your reels sitting around with that tension on them. Now I'm all set. For, for rigging up and I'm ready to go. And it, it's so easy to do if you follow all the rules. Uh, if you're interested in how we do it with a bait caster, then my guys are gonna put how to, uh, how to spool up an inshore bait caster in the com, they'll put a link in the comments or the description below and show you how to do that. So let me run this through the guides real quick and get set up and then um, we'll wrap this video up. All right, let's review some of the rules. You gotta have a smaller diameter backing um, up your braid. So your mono backing needs to be about 10 pounds. Most of the time on this size spinner, I'm really using, you know, this is 2,500, 3,000 size. I'm not using braid weights that have a lot of memory. So I'm using eight and 10. That's what we wanted to do the demonstration with. So um, that's important. Make sure you tighten your drag so that you don't create twist. That would be like reeling against the drag with a big fish. So don't forget to do that. Also, keep a gloved hand or a wet microfiber towel. Grab the line when you spool it up. It's really that simple. Now, the most important part is you don't want to put twist in the line right away. That's why we're reviewing this. So make sure that when your reel's turning this way, you're pulling the line off the spool in the same direction. Now you're saying, well, you pulled it underneath when you were spooling it off the way I did right here in this picture. You can see the way the spool is set up, okay? But that's really the same thing as it coming off backwards. It would be coming off the bottom of the spool. And many times in the past, we take it for granted People say, well, you know, you spool a bait caster with the line coming off the top of the spool. 
and you fill the, those spinning rods where it's coming off the bottom of the spool. But that's only true with the spinning rod if you're paying attention to what direction it comes off because that machine at the plant might put that label on the wrong side. You gotta check it. Don't forget to check it. And that's really it. Once you've done that, and then I'll give you a little bit better look at this spool edge if you can see this here. You see how I've got that within like an eighth, okay? It's because this is a beveled edge on this the sustain, so it's where that other edge is. If you don't overfill it and you leave yourself just a little bit of room because you put it on tight. Now, if you put it on loose, you'd have all kinds of problems. That's why it's important to put it on with a wet rag or at least a gloved hand so you can keep constant tension on it. You do not. That's why I like spooling it on that little number with the, with the twist tie or some spooling apparatus because you've got some type of control. So many times I see people just spool and spinning reels up and that, that wheel is just bouncing all over the deck or on the living room floor, or shop floor, or whatever, and that line's going on milly-nilly and then they get out there and they end up having a bunch of wind knots and the first thing they blame is the braid company and that has nothing to do with it, it really doesn't. Especially in these lighter weight braids, you rarely have trouble if you put the line on right. That's it. All right, hopefully you found this little tip from Flats Class YouTube helpful. And if you did, push that button right there, that subscription button. I need you in my virtual classroom each and every week. And as we move forward and you're getting the notifications because you already hit that bell too, and you give us those likes and we start to grow as a channel, when we get the 50,000 subs, we're going to take this channel to another level. And what do I mean by that? We're going to do a lot more traveling. We're going to do a lot more field trips at some of my partner's plants. Give you the inside look at things. Things the other guys might not be able to do. We're going to, we're going to go places, and I'm going to take you with me. That's all I've got for this week. Next, next video, hmm, how to get rid of line twists that you create on the water. That sounds like a good one. really does.